Why are major college football programs like Notre Dame, Auburn, Michigan, North Carolina State, Florida State, Texas A&M, why are they struggling to throw the football and score points? This is 2024. As I sit here and look at my list, I still have Clemson on there, even though they scored a bunch this past weekend, but they didn't exactly light it up against Georgia. And I know the dogs are good, but Clemson looks like a lost program. And they're just one of several that are a microcosm of a couple of things that are intertwined that I'm seeing over and over again in college football. A lot of it centers around one key word that goes with coaches in general. And I doubt it ever goes away completely, but those that buck the trend are the ones that are winning the most. I'll get to that in a minute. And I'm going to use Kirby Smart as an example. The word is stubbornness. When you are constantly stubborn, especially as it relates to the passing game, you will lose. You must openly and willingly all year round want to go out and destroy your opponent with the run game and the passing game. There are no exceptions. No team, even as talented as Georgia, is going to win a national title with just ground and pound. Don't believe me? Look back a couple of years ago when Georgia defeated Ohio State in the semifinal. And then I don't even know what you want to call it to what they did to TCU in the final. I think TCU was spinning, but passing the football is the key. And even last year when Georgia laid an egg against Alabama in a couple of key plays and didn't make the playoff, they still averaged 305 yards passing. So if Kirby Smart, who's as caveman as it gets, former defensive player at Georgia, at safety, SEC player that was kind of revered for how he played the game and very conservative with his play calling when he was at, at Alabama as a defense coordinator and when he went to Georgia as an offensive and defensive philosophy guy, he just wanted to keep everything in front of him and quite frankly out talent people, which the recruiting basically does. Even he has changed. So again, the programs that I got here, and I'm going to use Notre Dame as my mainstay, but you could have picked any of these schools. Florida State, Notre Dame, Auburn, NC State. What in the world? have They had like 104 yards against Tennessee. They were supposed to compete for the league championship in the ACC. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that. Michigan. What was that against Texas? I know it's Texas, but what was that? Then again, Texas A&M. I know it's year one, but. I'm not, I'm not seeing it with Wegman, and I don't like the philosophy that I see from Elko. So I'm going to use Notre Dame as the example. Uh, they got the most embarrassing loss, probably, because they went down to Northern Illinois this past weekend after beating Texas A&M. It's truly bizarro world. But I'm going to use a couple of stats with Riley Leonard, talk a little bit about the philosophy of Marcus Freeman, his background, et cetera. And you're going to see some things here that go right back to that first word that I used at the beginning of the podcast stubbornness. So with that being said, consider the following stat for Notre Dame against Northern Illinois. Explosive plays. We hear them all the time as an additive in a broadcast. As somebody like myself that's podcasting talk about, what is an explosive? For me, and there's different measurements for this, it's a passing play of 20 or more yards or a running play, at least 15, usually 20. I, I like to go all in and say 20, but 15-yard plays are certainly welcome as well. Well, if you're Notre Dame, you certainly want it to be 15 because they didn't have a single passing play of 20 yards against Northern Illinois. Zero. How is that possible against anybody? Georgia, Ohio State, Texas, Bama, Miami, anybody. Northern Illinois? Well, let me tell you why. It's a few reasons. Not having Jordan Faison probably didn't, didn't help. I didn't even see him in the stats. I haven't watched the game and probably won't because that game's so bad. I'm not going to review it. Kind of like I'm not going to review the NC State game after they scored 10 against Tennessee. But at the same time, you have plenty of athletes at tight end, at running back, and certainly at receiver. Even though Notre Dame is not known as receiver you, how in the world do you come up with 14 points against Northern Illinois? Well, your inability to even try to throw the football down the field. Something Freeman even touched on recently uh, before a game, by the way, is a problem. 
So on the flip side, what he needs to do post haste, and this is the same for Dave Dorn, uh, Sharon Moore, anybody else on this list, openly discuss downfield passing as a priority. And I'm not talking about RPO game. That's the additional. You have to willingly and openly admit as a program you want to throw the football down the field. That is a daily assignment as a mainstay in your program. All these schools that I just mentioned, I mean, Connor Wegman, I know it was Notre Dame's defense last week, but he threw for 100 yards and 40%. You don't have a ton of playmakers or whatever, but they were scared to death to even go max protection. Notre Dame's got a solid pass rush, but it's not unbelievable, and they couldn't get the ball down the field. NC State just... It makes no sense. They got Rodgers, the kid that transferred from Ohio State, and they got Concepcion, who was one of the best freshman receivers in the country last year. They got 10 points against Tennessee. You see this theme? Defensive-minded coaches are probably the most stubborn, if I was to guess. Freeman is. Dorn is. Now, now you freeze at Auburn. That's a whole other level. He's trying to cheer up a, a roster that's for years been underwhelming, but they still didn't come into that game against Cal. That's the game I was at last weekend. Figure it out. But Back to Notre Dame, Riley Leonard, he's a big, strong guy. You can't tell me he can't push the ball 20 to 30 yards down the field pretty easily. All those tight ends they have, Jeremiah Love, et cetera. This is a mindset that Notre Dame has failed at, and again, all these schools have, that they're not utilizing. You're holding your own talent back. It has nothing to do with the opposition. Your biggest threat is yourself in life, and it is in football. If you limit your offense, it will be limited. Shocker. And I hate it because covering this stuff is not fun. It is really boring. It's kind of like mid-1980s NFL. There are about five to ten quarterbacks that were really good. This is when the rules where you could pretty much bug receivers. And I was a kid watching it. Big passing games were not easy. They just weren't. Well, it's almost like we're going back to that with some of these teams, but it's self-inflicted. Notre Dame, you could argue, is the worst, but whatever the case may be, you must openly admit it. So that's the first thing. The second is how you approach it year long, how you practice, spending more time with it. Yes, that means maybe a little less for the defense in a, in a practice. So certain teams are just the opposite and spend way too much on offense, like an old school how mummy. I'm not saying go into that, but you still have to find a way to be in between there. You've got to balance it out and focus on we're not only going to pound you, we're going to throw it too. That happy in between. Miami and Florida State did it in the 80s and 90s, and it really, really helped them. Spurrier did it. He'd like to throw it around, but when they played really well, they would run it a little more against Florida State or a bowl game or something like that to give themselves more play action. There's a way to do that against good teams. Any of the teams that I just mentioned, Michigan, Notre Dame, Florida State, Auburn, Texas A&M, Clemson, NC State, those schools are failing miserably. To go back into Notre Dame for a really interesting point here, I was going through the stats, and again, they had a 15 and a 19 for the bigger passing plays, which that's pretty pathetic. They had the one touchdown run, which is incredible, from Jeremiah Love for 34 yards or they wouldn't have had a single play in a game against a Mac school for 20 yards. Because teams know they're not going to throw it down the field, though, they're going to crowd the line more. Imagine Jeremiah Love and Jadarian Price, two very talented running backs, if the team they were playing for would spread it a little bit more and teams knew going in there was zero chance they could put seven in the box and that worked. It'd be similar to what Tennessee did last year. They're known as a passing offense but they were ranked right around number 10, I believe, in the nation in rushing. You must willingly and openly tell everybody we're going to throw the ball in Tennessee, all that does that, or you will eventually pay the price. Now, I'm sure some people are saying recruiting is part of this 100% and emotion is too. I get that. But even as flat as like NC State was, Notre Dame was, Auburn was, et cetera, you can get away with a lot when you just hit a big play. You can get away with a lot because those teams all have play. Mike Auburn has serious talent at the receiver. I know Peyton Thorne is not unbelievable, but come on. 
you can't tell me that the quarterback at NC State or Michigan, et cetera, they can't at least hit one big play. This is mentality and how you practice or not that matters. So, again, when teams know you're not going to throw the football, they load it up, they take away your shorter passes, and they make you earn it with 14 play drives. College kids aren't real good with consistency with anything let alone getting hit in the mouth play after play after play, getting tackled. Cal did that to Auburn. They tackled hard. They got a lot of guys got hammered. They brought them to the ground. There were more drops because of it. You have to throw the ball down the field. There's just no other way around it. Here are a couple other just generic points that I, that I had and how this will help you. Um, I think that if you score early like and bring up this mentality, throwing the ball, Teams like Northern Illinois, you could use any MAC school than any SEC school, Big Ten school, Notre Dame, whatever plays. You need to tell them openly, albeit in private, hey, we need to smoke these guys by halftime. If we're going to make a run in the playoff, and that's the objective of these schools, let's be honest, if we're going to make a run, I can't be playing all the starters all the way through 12 games into the third, late third, early fourth, or even through the game. It doesn't work mathematically, it will not work. Too much beating on the body for any position. We must be able to play backups openly and willingly, again, in the second half of games by smoking some teams in the first half. Easiest way to do that? Throw the football down the field. It's execution, which takes a ton of time. I know. Too bad. Do it anyway. You have to throw the ball down the field. That also brings up something else. Kids love this stuff. I talk to these recruits. If you don't throw the ball consistently down the field, you won't consistently get them to sign with you. Like Notre Dame and Auburn has had a couple of really good freshmen come in, guys I think have a chance to play in the NFL if they stick around. But are you going to do that with what you're showing this year? Not likely. It's going to be a struggle to get guys to come into the fold. Why would they want to come play for that? Same thing. At Mid- like, How is Michigan going to recruit receivers right now you got a former walk-on being the quarterback quarterback recruiting has been a bust which is weird by the way with Harbaugh being there but he did a terrible job you have to have that recruiting strategy to throw it all over the place to win Michigan was an aberration last year with a weak schedule and this flawless execution that the sliver they they got through was unbelievable and hats off to Harbaugh and his staff for it yeah I know that Hunter the Stallions thing but they were still really good that's going to be the exception, not the rule. It's just not. You have to be able to get guys in that can just make plays because my guy over here is better than yours. The easiest way to do it, again, is throwing the football with explosive plays, not screens and five-yard inches. Too much of that junk was going on this past weekend from what I saw. It's not very entertaining to cover, I can assure you, as a member of the media. Also, if a team comes out flat, and this is kind of an add-on to it, I think passing game helps because it gets – crowd into it and everything else you've got to be able to have consequences for how guys play some of these games big game like especially nc state how are you just laying an egg against tennessee there has to be open-ended consequences for how these guys play that's on the coaches freeman dorn whoever it is i i have to take some responsibility go in front of the press that's fine but if we lay an egg emotionally then all of you again pick whichever school you want You guys will not get and then fill in the blank. Like they normally get steak on Monday or whatever. You got to take away NIL. You got to do whatever it is. And I mean that literally. Like if you perform poorly as a person in society, you get fired or you lose bonuses, et cetera. Why would college football players be any different? NIL should be a part of that. But that's that's something they're going to have to figure out. If you stink it up as a team, like all three levels, special teams, defense, and offense, that's part of it. But again, it still goes back to the passing game. That that is such an easy way to jumpstart it. There's nothing like a long passing play to get everybody into the game, whether it's home, road, or neutral. Got to do it. Finally, as a final point, no excuses for not executing this stuff. If I commit to this, you now have to go out and perform. I'll get the people, the trainers, et cetera, to make it happen. But just an open passing attack that is very modern and a pro style. I, I know I'm kind of rambling here, but I, and I want this because it's more fun to cover, but you're going to get guys to buy into that. I don't think it's going to be very hard. 
because it prepares guys for the NFL. It's more exciting. You're going to be able to recruit better. There's just no reason not to do it. It even prepares you against teams that can throw the ball consistently. You should, you should absolutely do it. So to wrap this up, there's really no excuse for teams like Michigan or Notre Dame, NC State, Clemson, any of those schools to consistently struggle with this. Now, I know there's some recruiting catastrophes out there, and I do mean catastrophes. What Michigan has done at quarterback recruiting, oof, but they've done nothing but run the ball the last few years and just dominated the line of scrimmage. Again, that is the exception, not the rule. Don't look for that to happen again anytime soon. You have to throw it. So I'm curious what people think. Comment about this. If you have somebody else that you think I should bring up to do another podcast, that's fine. But I don't want to cover this kind of stuff anymore. It is boring. It is not fun. And quite frankly, for some of these schools, it's embarrassing. So let's get away from that and throw the ball a little bit and accept that the forward pass is a good thing. Everybody have a good night. I will talk to you soon.